I'm so excited to tell you about the craft that we're doing today. This is one of my mosaic projects that, believe it or not, did not take this long to do. This took a week. Um, this is an address. You know how everybody has those address plates on the front of their homes? For years, I have been wanting to create a mosaic address plate for my dad and stepmom's house. When I created this address plate, I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted it to be very personal to them. So I wanted it to have flowers in it and I wanted it to have a hummingbird. So there's a hummingbird and there's a bee. And in the bee's trail are all of the names of my family members. So it says Walter, Pam, Jenna, Lisa, Richard, and Matthew. So all of our names are incorporated into this address plate. And of course the floral theme, and of course, the most important thing is that you can read the numbers. And I decided to do the numbers in bold, ridged with black. And then the background was gonna be kind of a sky blue. So it only took me a week and I'm gonna show you how I did it. And hopefully this will inspire you to do projects on your own. Every single cut that I've used are cuts that you know how to do if you watched my first two mosaic videos here at Lisa Guerrero TV. So yes, it's bigger. Yes, it looks like it's more detailed, but it's the same cuts that you already know how to do. And so I'm gonna walk you through it. So the first thing you need to do is to decide what your backboard is going to be that you're gonna put the mosaic on. In my case, I used a plain white shelf. So I took that old white shelf and I made it waterproof. And that's the first thing you need to do is weatherproof whatever your, back, uh, your backboard is gonna be, because these are gonna be exterior um, mosaic projects. So I used a, a, a lacquer and then I bought stencils. So the very first thing you want to do is start in the center with the main part of your design. So how did I make these perfectly beautiful numbers? Well, I just went to an arts and crafts store and I got stencils and that's where I started. So I started to fill in the numbers first with gold and I did all the numbers and then I outlined them in black. After that, I decided to do the flowers, the flowers and the hummingbird and the bee in that order. I thought it was really important to make sure that the hummingbird really stood out. At first, you'll see in the pictures that I did the hummingbird with an orange beak, but then he looked too much like just any kind of a random bird. I think the black beak made him look more like a hummingbird. And um, I just did the design, which was the flowers, the hummingbird and the bee with the bee's trail and all of our names in the bees trail. The last part of it was I did the outline of the green ridge around the outside and then the gold rim around that. The very last thing I did was fill in the blue sky background. So that was the last part that I cut and then I glued on. The kind of glue I used was weld bond glue. It's a white glue and it dries clear. It's all stained glass. And I got the glass from uh, a girlfriend's stained glass factory. Um, she gave me a bunch of her old odds and ends. And the tools that I used were a, a wheel cutter, um, the same kind that I used in the other two mosaics that we did here at Lisa Guerrero TV. And I, I'm gonna be using grout, I used grout. And you'll see the section that we do on camera of grouting it. And that's it, it's pretty simple you guys. Um, in the end, I'm going to attach two hooks to the top and we're going to hang them right under the eaves of my dad and Pam's house with chains. So anyway, I hope you like this awesome craft. It's really easy. Like I said, it took me a week. Um, anybody can do it. Don't be intimidated because it's big. You can do big projects now that you know all of the, the, um, the simple cuts. It's pretty easy. So you're going to glue the pieces on a backboard let it dry for at least 24 hours, and then you're gonna grout it. And the last thing you're gonna do is seal it to make it waterproof. And you can just paint or spray a clear sealant over it. You guys, it's grout day. I am so excited. Our project is now dry. The whole address board um, that we've been working on, again, it's taken me a week to do this. I've been working on this every night for a week. Um, I've let this dry now for 48 hours and we're gonna do grout today, but I'm gonna do something kinda tricky. I'm gonna use two different colors of grout on this board because I want different tiles to pop. So, you know that bumblebee that we made that has my uh, family's names kind of woven throughout the little um, trail of the bumblebee? I'm gonna grout that in white because I want it to stand out 
and I'm going to grout the blue flowers and the hummingbird in white too because I want those to pop because the rest of the board I'm going to grout in a gray color and so that's really going to fade the background sky colors and it's going to bring the whole thing together but there are certain elements that I want to pop with white. So I'm going to start with the white. Um, I bought pre-mixed grout for this project because I'm lazy. Um, not really, but I just thought it would be easier rather than mixing today. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do, pull my hair back. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is put on my glasses because I need to see what's happening. And I'm going to start to grout the trail of my bumblebee in white. And I'm just going to start with a stick. I'm going to start pushing in the white grout just around this bumblebee trail. Not around the whole thing, just around the bumblebee trail because I want this to pop out. So I'm just pushing in the white grout all along this bumblebee trail. And then I'm going to push the white grout around our blue flowers as well. So we're grouting the white first. Again, really unusual technique. Most people don't do it like this. Most people use just one color of grout, but I've done several projects where I've used two colors and it's been really effective. Again, the trail goes through this area, across this flowered area, and I'm pushing it in. I'm using a stick to kind of gather the grout and then I'm using my fingers just to help push it in and we're just going around all this stuff and just icing it like it's like we're icing a cake but we're getting in between all of these these beads and the main beads are a little bit raised they're higher than the other tiles getting the edges, getting it all the way to the edges. Don't forget the edges. Then I want to get it around the areas that are blue flowers. Since we're going to grout in a gray that's kind of almost like a blue, I want to make sure that the blue flowers will pop. So we're going to do the background, which is the grout in white, so that they don't get lost in the blue grout, the blue gray grout. And again, these are both pre mixed grout. I typically get dry grout and add water and mix it myself. But in this case, got the pre-mixed grout just to save us some time for the project. And then I think the last thing I'm going to do is cover the bird, my hummingbird, because I really want his blue and purple feathers to pop. And again, I'm just using this stick for these smaller areas and just pushing down into all of the um, areas in between tiles, right? Okay, so that is our white grout. Okay, so everything else, we're done with the white grout. We're going to cover it, use that for next time. So you don't want to leave it out because you don't want it to get all dried up. Okay, now here is our gray grout. For a gray grout, I'm going to use a bigger tool. And I'm just going to throw this on the rest of it. Here we go. Cover this bad boy. Start with the corner up here with my B. And again, do plenty on the edges. Don't forget the edges. And this is going to take a minute to get all of this properly covered. And I'm going to go right up next to the white grout. And it'll blend a little bit on these edges. That's okay. The main thing is we've got to get either the gray grout or the white grout in between every single tile and push it down. And 
again, I'm using this tool to pull the grout in between all of the all the areas. And you come right up next to these little white edges. And it's okay if they smear a little bit and move into each other, it's okay. Again, what do I always say about mosaics? They're not perfect. You know, they're little broken pieces of glass or ceramic that you put back together. These aren't machine cut, these are hand cut. We cut these, so they are by their very nature imperfect. Kind of why I love this. So, we just covered the entire address plate with grout, both gray and white grout. Um, this whole process took about 20 minutes. Really, if I wasn't doing it for camera, I might take more time, it might take 30 minutes. And then it takes about 20 minutes to dry. So all of this has got to get down into those nooks and crannies. That's why we we're pressing it down to really get in there so that it holds together. And all the edges. So, what did I use? I used simple grout. This is pre-mixed grout. This entire one quart was what I needed actually for this entire board. Um, pretty much finished that. So one quart was enough to do the majority of this board. And then I did a little bit of the white. And that's it. So we're just gonna let this dry for a little while and we're gonna come back and we're gonna wipe off the grout and see our finished product. Okay, so we're ready to pull the grout off the top of our project. Why do I have the glue with me again? Well, often when you pull off the grout, some of the tiles will pop out. And if they pop out, then I immediately need to re-glue it into its space and then tuck some grout around it. So I have the, the um, glue ready just in case. I'm gonna use a bigger sponge to do the majority of the pulling and then I have the smaller sponge to just take details off as we go. So it's been drying for about 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and so it's really warm out today and it's a dry day so I think this is drying fast. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the project now. We need a big pail of water with your sponge and what you're going to do is dip the sponge into the water, get as much moisture out as possible because you don't want it to get too wet because if it's too wet, then the glue will pull off and you'll get a bunch of tiles coming out. So you don't want it too wet. You want it to be damp, but not wet. And the dampness will help pull this off. And you're gonna be very gentle as you go. Again, if you pull too fast or you, you yank it, then a lot of the tiles are gonna come off and you don't want that to happen. Gently pulling the dried grout off the top. And I can kind of turn over the sponge as I go. So it just takes a minute for us to get down in here and get all of this off, and especially the drier it gets. It takes a while to pull all the grout off the top, but be patient, it'll happen. So now we're using a smaller sponge because now we're starting to get into the details. We're lifting a lot of the grout out. Um, now we're going to get into the corners and the edges a little bit more as we start to lift with a smaller sponge. And again, the reason that I'm turning the sponge is I don't want to um, put old grout back in. I wanna be lifting grout, not putting it back in. So now I'm gonna take a towel, now that I've gotten most of the grout off the top, and I'm just gonna pull this old towel around it to absorb some of the moisture and to still knock some of the grout off the tops. And also go back over this and find the spots where it didn't pull up right off the top of the glass. And it's just called polishing. 
We're just doing detail work here now. Okay guys, it's Christmas, can you tell? <laughs> um, so I gave my dad and Pam their um, mosaic for their address and we're about to hang it. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, they set up the chains for it. So I have the chains. Got it, dad? Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Woohoo! What do you think, you guys? Good. Looks good. So, you guys, what do you think? I think it's yeah, beautiful. It's wonderful. wonderful. Yay. Yay. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this craft. It's beautiful. Um, it's a great gift, or it's something that you could put in your own house to really personalize your house. Thanks again for watching Lisa Guerrero TV. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and tell everybody else in your life to subscribe too. Thanks for watching and thanks for watching me on Inside Edition as well and have a great week.